it all started on 24th january the us based hindenburg and its reports have created a flutter in the indian ecosystem at this point of time adani and the hindenburg clash is the matter of the moment the high profile clash was closely observed by market watchers institutions politicians and was so controversial that it overshadowed even the union budget 2023 as a part of this video i would like to do an in depth analysis of the adani groups leveraged position and what that leveraged position means the aftermath of the controversy was a bloodbath in adani group stocks most of its group companies lost anywhere between 40 to 50% of their market capitalization just in a week span not just that the conglomerate has cancelled its plan to piece 20000 crore follow on public offering of adani enterprises which was though technically fully subscribed but the promoter had chosen to return the money to the respective subscribers but what exactly is going on with the adani group is there any truth in the allegations of hindenburg how we can find the allegations vis-a-vis the factual position of the adani group is a big question mark because adani group as a conglomerate has many companies in its fold both listed and unlisted that being the case getting hold of the information and trying to arrive at a comprehensive picture may be difficult but given the information available in the public domain one way to find out is through a process of looking at various financial metrics to help determine the company's financial health first i would like to present the debt exposure of various group companies of adani at this point of time though in the recent past as per reports he has paid some small amounts to some of the financial institutions post the debacle of his follow on public offer for the financial year 22 adani group's debt stood at almost 2.2 trillion that is to say 2 lakh 20000 crores has been borrowed by adani group of course this 2.2 trillion equivalent to 2 lakh 20000 crores is an increase by a whopping 42% in the last one year the one question that comes into the mind of everyone is the quantum of the cash and bank balance which the company has been showing almost to the tune of 26989 crores when the company is borrowing heavily and when its borrowings are standing at almost 220000 crores of course one can derive from the kind of borrowings that they have been doing that they have been keeping always in their war chest a quantum of borrowed funds in the form of bank and cash balances with them for meeting any kind of contingencies or for meeting any kind of interest obligations or for meeting any kind of repayment obligations or for meeting any kind of unexpected acquisitions which they are known to announce as and when they tend to find the opportunities in any area that they feel that they can enter so if we look at the 2 lakh 20000 crores debt from where it is originating in the sense that from which company this aggregate is arising then we have these details that is adani ports has a debt of almost 45456 crores 
for the financial year 22 and Adani transmission has a debt of 30,389 crores for FY22. Adani Enterprises has a total debt of 41,023 crores in FY22. Adani Power has 50,419 crores in FY22. Adani Green Energy has 52,188 crores in FY22. Adani Gas has 1,089 crores in FY22. So this is what is the bifurcation breakup or classification of the total aggregate debt of 2,20,000 crores in terms of the debt exposure to various institutions whether you call them as domestic institutions or you call them as overseas institutions. But the fact is that Adani group has around 2,20,000 crores of debt exposure. The high debt levels of Adani group companies have been a concern for market watchers, financial institutions, banks in India and overseas and also to politicians and bureaucrats because some of the companies which are operating through Adani group are the strategic establishments for the Indian Union. Hence, we can't ignore the financial metrics of Adani group at any given point of time. Given that, it is also important for us to analyze and look at the operational cash flows of the key group companies to really find whether it has sufficient operational cash flows to meet its debt obligations. That will crystal clearly tell us whether the group is in position to repay their debt or not. That's where to determine the sustainability of the debt, one can look at the debt by cash flow from operations metric. This metric shows the amount of a debt a company has for every rupee of its cash flow from operations and gives an idea of the company's ability to repay its debt through its cash flow. If we look at Adani Green Energy's debt by cash flows, the ratio is 17. What does it mean? It means that for every one rupee of cash flow that Adani Green Energy generates, it has 17 rupees in the form of debt. Likewise, Adani Enterprises has 29 as its debt by CFO ratio, which means that for every rupee of cash flow that Adani Enterprises generates, it has rupees 29 in debt. And Adani transmission has debt by CFO ratio at 7. That means for every 1 rupee earned, it has 7 in the form of debt. And other companies like Adani Ports and Adani Power have debt by CFO ratios of 4.64 and 4.7 respectively. That can be considered as acceptable ratios. Anything below 5 is an acceptable ratio but anything above 5 is not an acceptable debt by CFO ratio. That being so, the key critical companies of Adani group are in the higher debt by CFO ratio where their, their current cash flows are relatively very low when compared to the kind of, when compared to the huge quantum of debt that the respective companies have taken from the banks, financial institutions and various other lenders. When we look at all these companies, what we can derive is, yes, the group through its entities has over leveraged itself and its cash flows are not at this point of time sufficient to meet its debt repayment obligations. Even after a pile of debt, 
of course adani has taken huge bets based on his ability to price debts and make leverage buyouts in his bid to build the empire through debt though he is able to claim that he is one of the richest men on the earth but these bets based on the debt may backfire at any given point of time if there is even a slight slowdown in the infrastructure as six out of seven of its listed companies operate in the infrastructure sector though adani is tom tom as the world's second richest person till the hindenburg report surfaced but the richness and uh, and the ranking was only on the basis of just equity valuation but not based on his real cash flow scenario or situation so adani's richness in terms of world rankings need not be taken seriously because his shares didn't have the exchange or conversion ability into cash because it's the allegation of hindenburg that in all his companies he is the major shareholder either through his names or through some unknown names so when a person ho- holding the stock of his companies substantially in the listed segments though his stock price may rise through several means but it has no meaning unless that stock spreads across various financial institutions and gives money back to the promoter that is adani here but in the case of adani it looks like that adani made a big attempt with big plans to make a world class empire to the equity markets but the equity markets backfired in the case of adani and his attempt to do a follow on public offer has not succeeded because it couldn't garner the retail interest it couldn't garner the qip portion and it even couldn't get the employee subscription which he has allocated as a part of his fpo risings only through a handful of friends that is the big corporates he could technically make the issue succeed and then immediately announce returning of the money to all the concerned people so it's clear that adani though used the market capitalization just to project himself as a billionaire or the world's richest man with some rankings which are fictitious in nature but his attempts to convert that equity strength into cash always did not give him an opportunity and that's how so far he is to a greater extent a non starter through equity markets but what do you call amid all this when some of the indian institutions buy his equity which is illiquid and still say that they are safe what do you call them i just leave it to you thank you very much for your patient listening bye